bad. What's going on guys? We are back with another video today. In this video, we are going to be talking uh, about if gear matters or not. And I'll be reviewing my Canon 80D here. Uh, does your gear matter? To an extent. If you are just beginning in photography and you're doing it as a hobby, then your gear doesn't matter as much. Because when you're starting out in photography, it's all about learning how to shoot. Learning how to be creative, finding what you're most creative in, and whether it be sports photography, street photography, studio photography, also how to use your camera. You want to make sure you master how to use your camera before you get a, another bigger, pricier, better camera. Um, because then that way that'll ensure that you are getting the most out of the camera that you have. If you are also starting out in photography, you're probably not getting paid uh, for your photography. If you are, great. But once you start getting paid, is when I think you should start thinking about upgrading your gear. Because people are spending their money on your work and for your expertise, they expect the best work possible that you can produce. Um, and in some cases, having a better camera uh, or a better setup, better lenses, that will help. Um, for the first while, for the longest while, I stuck with the same base kit, base lens, but it bought it, everything. Um, but as soon as I started getting paid and people are investing their money into your work and you as a photographer, then I started upgrading my gear. When I started shooting sports photography um, a lot, I upgraded to a body with um, a higher FPS, uh, which means FPS stands for frames per second, and that is how fast that your shutter actually opens and closes and grabs those shots. Um, so I upgraded to a camera which would capture more shots in a short frame of time rather than my older camera which didn't capture as many. Um, this camera that I upgraded to also had better ISO capabilities for darker environments or at nighttime when I was shooting sports. Uh, and I also ended up saving up, uh, it's important to save your money, and I upgraded my lens. Um, I upgraded my lens to something that could reach a little further, so I upgraded to a 70 to 200 Sigma 2.8, which also the aperture helps in low light situations, and I can reach across the field with basketball court, whatever. So when I needed to get those shots that were further away of athletes, I could do that uh, comfortably with the lens that I had. In other instances, you may not need to upgrade your gear. If you are doing portrait photography and you're getting paid, you still may not have to upgrade your gear. Um, there are lots of beginner or entry level cameras that perform amazing um, and especially outside in bright conditions or if you have a perfectly lit room or a studio setting say you can you will do just fine with that entry level camera um, like I said lighting is key and in most situations you're not going to be able to control the lighting or have the best possible lighting um, in which case you would to upgrade. For situations where you can control the lighting and or you're always shooting in the middle of the daytime when it's nice outside and you're always shooting outside, then you may not need to upgrade um, depending on what you're doing again. Now jumping into the ADD review, this camera has been amazing for me. Um, again, it's not super professional, it's not entry level amateur, it's right in between and I'm hoping to upgrade to the EOS R soon, which I need to save up a ton of money for, because I'm broke. Um, anyway, something that was amazing when I upgraded from my old camera uh, was the, the amount of megapixels that I got. Uh, you, this ADD gives you 24.4 something, I don't know, megapixels with a dual pixel autofocus system, which is absolutely amazing and key when it comes to sports photography with me. Always make sure I'm locked on to my subjects and very rarely ever misses focus. Again though, that depends on the lens you have. I have a good pairing between my body and my lens, so I'm all set. And speaking of autofocus, um, this camera has 45 autofocus points. Pretty freaking good. Again, helps a ton, especially in sports photography. I can just set 
one of those autofocus points between the 45. I can touch it on the, pick it on the touch screen, choose it for myself. I have faith in my camera, and I trust that majority of the time it will hit focus, which is awesome. Another thing that I love about this camera is the swivable, swivel, flip out screen, whatever you call it. That thing is awesome. Uh, don't use it as much in sports photography. I might use it if I'm doing a little bit of filming um, for a game, which rarely ever happens. But when I'm out taking pictures, say for portraits or in street photography, any time where I have to set up a shot ahead of time um, and I'm not shooting like a run and gun situation, that screen is awesome. Because that way I don't have to crane my neck, get all the way down onto the ground just to get one shot. I can just flip out the screen, tilt it towards me, camera down on the ground and then, and then I'll get to go. I don't do video. I dabble in it here and there. That's not my main mojo. Um, but I do wish like if I if, if I am filming anything uh, and I want to slow it down, I know it's not a big deal, but this doesn't do uh, 120 frames per second. To me, it doesn't really matter. It'd be nice. I don't really care. But if you're someone who does a ton of video and you're looking for some buttery, smooth, slow-mo, may not be the camera for you. However, in my case, it doesn't really make a difference. I'm fine with the 1080p at 60 frames per second, so I can settle with that. Having a higher FPS in sports photography, as I mentioned before, is key, because you want to make sure you capture every single movement that those athletes are doing. Um, this isn't crazy, but it's an upgrade from what I had before. It does seven frames per second, which isn't bad. Um, it does what I, need, what I need it to do. There are some gaps sometimes, but for now, it's doing a great job. I'm really pleased with it. Another thing that I absolutely love about this camera is I can hook it up through Wi-Fi, uh, or I think NFC if you're on Android. I think that's it. Um, to my iPhone which is awesome. So I can control all the, like I can control my camera from my phone. So I can control everything right now that I'm filming from this. I can also take pictures if I don't, if you don't have a remote shutter externally hooked up to your camera, you can use your phone, which is awesome if you want a nice, clean, long exposure without any camera shake at the beginning, having to touch that button. Another thing that's amazing about being able to connect my phone to my ADD is I can take all my photos from my camera that I've taken on the on that SD card and put them right onto my phone. So if I'm out and I need, want to post to Instagram really quickly or whatever, I can just transfer them over from my camera to my phone, quickly edit them on the Lightroom app and then upload to Instagram. Or I can show them to clients or airdrop to clients. I can even send photos right from my camera to clients if they don't want them edited which is absolutely amazing. ISO, dynamic range. Not horrible, like my old T5, but still a lot, still a lot better than what I had before. Not as good as what I will be getting soon, but it's that happy medium like I said before. And it's getting the job done uh, pretty well. So I can't complain about that. I'd say before I start seeing a ton of noise, I typically do not dare go past 1600 ISO. I find the highest I'll try and keep it is 1000, but there's sometimes when I absolutely have to push 1600 and it does start to hurt a little, but better than my past camera. Um, so I'm happy. I believe that wraps up the Canon ADD review and the question if gear matters. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, whether it be about gear, the ADD, um, or anything else. I'll be happy to get back to you guys, and until next time. Even crushed it, but how can the... I, Pizza places with good crust, you're doing it right, guy. You're doing, you're doing it right. I believe, uh, I believe that does it for the ADD review and uh, me touching on if gear matters or not. Um, if you have any questions,
about the Canon ADD gear, any of that, leave it in the comment section below. Also, leave a comment uh, about what you want you what the, about what video you guys want to see next. Uh, what topic you want me to cover? Uh, please leave a like, a comment, and be sure to subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications when I post next. Um, and until next time, keep shooting, guys. Now that.